What's up, people of the internet? It's Aaron, AKA Intervals. I'm here at the Masquerade in heaven, in Atlanta, for a nearly sold out show on our spring tour with Hail the Sun. And uh, we're back with more Fractal content. I mean, can't really go wrong with that. Um, all of the rhythm guitars that are just fully saturated and balls to the wall for the whole show are based around this sound. Little tweaks depending on the guitar and the pickups. Between tours, I do tend to mess with things even if they're perfectly fine, as we all do. So between the last video that we shot together and, and this one, maybe some fine tuning. The rhythm guitars, notably though, have changed to the, the Rev models, which didn't exist last time that we did this. So I'm on Rev Purple with the Horizon devices in the front. Bright cap is off, and the Horizon devices is doing a good amount of the heavy lifting as far as the bright content and the more, I'd say, leaned out and fine-tuned content in front of the amplifier. What I would consider to be just like my main lead. This is the Friedman HBE V3. And I should also note that I'm using the same IR pretty much on everything. So uh, I've actually exported the uh, IRs from the GGD Cali suite, the oversized suite. And this is the smooth. IR. Most sounds in this tour are predominantly the 57 on the smooth IR from that library, and I've blended in a little bit of 121 for some stuff. But again, you know, even if it's perfect, I'll change it next door. So. nice, pretty smooth. Uh, if memory serves, there's a dual delay of some sort that I've sort of carved up myself, try to get a little bit darker and a little bit out of the way. There's not really a whole lot going on in the chain other than Tube Screamer, Friedman HBE V3, got those GGD IRs, a little bit of, of stereo chorus, and then a delay. I think something that um, I've been getting a lot of messages about is stereo chorus on guitars. I'm, I'm, I'm saying normalized chorus on guitars. That's on distorted guitars, I should say. Uh, that's kind of been my, my new thing. I can't really, I can't really unhear the sound of a good lead. As long as soon as I take off modulation, I'm, I'm just like, what are we doing here? So there's a filtered rhythm in here, which is actually only in the house. So that's pretty fun. We just lost the cabs on stage. Um, and that's deliberate, actually, worth mentioning. Um, I've been finding a lot of the time when the band drops out for impact, if I do a lo-fi sound, I cut cabs on stage. I literally just mute output three, which is the one that we use to feed the cabinets on stage. I'll just mute output three in that preset so that we just get everything happening in the front. and then be able to kick back in on stage when the band comes in. So that's been um, kind of a fun trick. This preset's called Fuzzy Fives, and I believe it's the same lead amp, potentially copied just with some different settings. And I'm using a uh, drive block after the cabinet with a bit crusher, and I'm, uh, I'm running it in parallel. So the idea is uh, in the studio, we have a sound that we often go for where we take a duplicate of whatever guitar signal uh, is happening at that time, and we'll run it to other Sound Toys Decaptator, completely fry it and just blend it. We'll use Sound Toys Little Alter Boy, which also has like a fuzz circuit and a form and shifter, and we'll just kind of blend those. I had to scratch my head to figure out like, how do we do this in Fractal Land? So for comparison's sake, here is my main lead. And then here's what we're, we're calling it the theme lead. So. This has the classic whammy algorithm, 15 or 20 percent or something with the low octave in the front. This is the fuzzy version. Pretty dark, actually, pretty mid forward. Um, there's some really hyper synths that happen in the tracks around this. So last tour we found we were sort of overlapping a little bit. This is a really challenging sound to get right. Travis is also playing a unison. So finding space for everybody is really important. This tone is a little freaky on its own. <laughs> It's kind of woolly, but it's huge though, and it sounds really good. 
right? That's kind of that thing. And then I have a variant of this called Fuzz Cloud, which is when I get into um, one of these more drawn out leads in the, in, the, in the tune, I'm really leaning into one of the cloud reverbs, uh, also using octave content fuzz and the Bit Crush vibe sounds like this. <laughs> Good tail on that. Um, so that's pretty much mnemonic in a nutshell. A uh, lot of core tones, I just use one main lead and one main rhythm, and then everything's like a variation, either by using octave content, some fuzz, playing with the width on the stereo chorus, depending on the sound, like the fuzzes are a little wider, etc. We've got some filtering going on, and notably, this drive block set to bit crush blended in parallel post cabinet. Some weird stuff, but sounds good, it's working. So that's mnemonic. The magic of camera editing, we've now switched guitars. I'm gonna show you guys some presets from our latest single, Neurogenesis. Bunch of really stylized sounds in this one. I was just telling Cooper off camera that uh, it takes two whole presets to do this one. This one song, because I'm still using scenes, it's my comfort zone. So in order to do this properly, I needed to duplicate the preset and make some different stylized scenes in the second one. So we have Neurogenesis and Neurogenesis Plus. <laughs> And that's the Rev, just sounding amazing. Um, I have a variant of this that I tend to use quite a bit through this song, which is the same sound with some micro shift. Sounds huge, really, really nice. And if you're listening in headphones, I'll toggle between them quickly. You should be able to actually hear that width. Makes a really big difference. It's only about 25, maybe 30%. It's the pitch block. Notably in this song, uh, aside from my main lead, which sounds like this. Really dark and mid forward, helps to really kind of cut through and stay vocal. I'm finally employing a, an EV1, and this is something we've wanted to do for a while. I've got this really cool filter sweep that happens in verse two. Which is pretty cool, and I'm just using the parametric EQ block and sweeping the high cut. So it's not a hard tone to dial, you just have to assign the expression pedal to that parameter in the EQ block. And then you have this to annoy your bandmates with. And it rocks. When I was dialing in that preset, I had half a mind to steal Cooper's sauce on the Maroon 5 song with the acoustic filter in. We're playing, we're playing reasonable stages where I'm still the one that's controlling the stuff, so. With the addition of the EV-1, I've also been able to do delay and reverb throws, which is something I've wanted to do for a while. In this tune, in Neurogenesis in particular, um, I've got a nice reverb throw that happens uh, coming out of the second chorus and going into the bridge. Sounds like this. <laughs> which is pretty, pretty enjoyable. I've also um, ever so gently automated up with the mix on the EV uh, tied to the, uh, to the mix on the delay. I've got the pitch, uh, I think it's like voice one set to one octave up, and I just bring it in like 10%. So you just get this little additional pitch. I'll let you hear that one more time. So this is mainly. <laughs> Beginning of the tune in the first verse, uh, there's this moment on the record where I'm panning back and forth in the first verse, and uh, we used the um, Sound Toys um, Primal Tap. The idea was to have a really short single repeat delay opposite me at all times. 
and my main sound is trading sides. So, of course, through the magic of automation, I'm not the one doing this, the computer is handling this. Um, but it's really fun and it sounds cool in the ears. I'll try to recreate this for you. So this is the left side. And then it changes sides. The image in the house is really cool because I'm always opposite myself. Uh, when it comes to where the dry sound is and where that really stylized single repeat is. And I think I used the 2290 uh, to do this one because I just like the way that feels and it felt right given, given the sound on the record. There's one octave lead I get into at the end. <laughs> Really vocal, super epic. The song is sort of taking its time to climax with this final extended chorus, and I wanted to take the lead even further. So based on a core lead, again, it's most likely the Freedman, Tube Screamer in the front, and then some octave content, et cetera. Big delay. That's pretty much it. So, you know, not a lot's changed except for everything and nothing all at the same time. That's what you can expect. I don't know, maybe we'll have to give one of these away. I don't know, who knows? A lot of this stuff you can hear at work on our brand new record it comes out on May the 17th. It's called Memory Palace. And then we go out to support Mammoth WVH. You can go to intervals.com, I-N-T-R-V-L-S.com for dates and more information. And uh, new record May the 17th. Hope to see you guys on the road. Peace.